What happens when stimulus loses its effect? You came here for the truth. That's an important discussion, of course, because people, they're over leveraged. They do not know what to expect. And I'll tell you right now, it ain't pretty. Let's look at a few issues today that surround just about everybody. The first thing I want to talk about is the Fed effect because they're pumping in stimulus from every angle possible, including setting up special purpose vehicles to try and keep this system afloat. The second thing I want to look at is semiconductors. We can learn a lot from the semiconductors. I'm going to teach you what you need to know right here. And of course, the third part being social security. So I'm covering the whole deal today. You got to stay with me. Let's go. Here we have the Fed repo operations. This reverse repo operation was over $1 trillion, a record high. We are expecting this to continue perhaps to two or $2.5 trillion by the end of the year, something I will keep you updated on. In addition to the reverse repo operations, you could see that the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has been increasing as well. We are expecting a taper, but that doesn't mean that they're going to actually reduce their balance sheet. It means that they are going to reduce the amount that they're printing every month. So the growth will be slower, but it will still be growing. And right now it is at over 8 0.25 trillion dollars a massive massive balance sheet no doubt and you're looking at this article here that the fed could reverse its easy policy soon here's what tapering means for stocks the ex expectation is look it's just going to be some the market is aware of it so it's not going to spook stocks look we don't know what's going to happen but if you look at 2018 as the prime example, you know that the market does not like a taper. We'll see. This is just showing you that in the previous trading session, by the time you're watching this video, stocks rose ahead of a series of earnings reports later in the day. And of course, everything is fine and dandy because interest rates are low. 2020 was bad for a lot of companies. Things look great a year later. Disney, of course, getting a lot of people with their streaming services and streaming services in general are obviously doing well because people are signing up to these things and they want to be at home versus at the movie theater, at least for many of them. There's some big changes that have happened over the last two years, no doubt, and many companies are benefiting from that. In addition to this, we have the infrastructure bill going through, and with that bill, many different companies are going to benefit from this as well. So if you follow the trends, you will see which sectors are going to see that and you can kind of narrow it down from there and if you have a basket of different companies if you think the streaming services are going to do well you know if you buy the top three names maybe two out of those three names start to do well and maybe one doesn't do so well well you're still winning i think that's the key point here the initial jobless claims continue to decline you could see there are fluctuations but of course Again, week after week, we are definitely seeing that downward direction. But in the opposite direction, the producer prices, they're more than a decade high today. And you could look at the chart month after month after month of gains. You look at this uh, in line with everything else that we've been seeing. And guess what? There's some serious inflation. You just have to look in the right place. Now, I want to get into this part of the video, and that is talking about semiconductors. Semiconductors, computer chips, they're in everything. They're not just in your phone and in your computer. They're in your vehicle. They're in your toaster. They're in your knapsack. They're in, they're in everything today. Well, this right here shows us something that could mean a change. And I just wanted to show you the chart right here really quickly. What they're trying to highlight is the decline that's being experienced right now. We've seen other declines before. This right here, by the way, is, is the start of 2021, just to give you an idea. Looking at this from the bottom of 2020, though, it's clear. These have been moving up. But now there have been some changes as a result of the supply constraints, the problems that are, which I'll show you in just a second, at the ports 
and so on. This right here just shows you the daily change. And it's day after day after day where it's it's in the negative and, and you see that. And that right there represents a change in pattern. It's not up some days and then down other days and the general direction is up. This right here is day after day after day. So I'm gonna monitor this for you and I will give you some more insight because when you see the semiconductors, that's a leading indicator. That is something that we should be paying attention to very, very carefully. And this index just shows you right now that there have been um, lower highs. So the direction overall has been down. There is a very serious weakness today in this particular index. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. Of course, you could look at the, the details, more details, more clarity if you want, but I will cover this in future videos. Right now, I want to get into the Money GPS Insights to tell you what this means for you. Number one, some indicators tell you a story of what's to come. Others, they're not so strong, but there are some that you should definitely be keeping an eye on. Number two, we can actually anticipate moves in markets or sectors or the index. But right now, today, things are looking quite precarious. So there is major volatility that you could see and it's something that I think people should be definitely watching very closely when I'm talking about the semiconductors here. Keep an eye out. Number three, as a result of everything I've shown you today and in previous videos, strong portfolios are definitely hedging their bets and they are also diversifying. Big, big uh, important points right now. Okay, so this right here is just showing you what's happening in Ningbo. This is in China, Freight Waves giving you a little bit of insight. This is probably one of the best websites, by the way, if you're talking about freight, the shipping industry. They closed the major container terminal and apparently, you know, there's a breakout and so on. They want to make sure that they keep it under control. That's what they're saying. And they're just showing you here supply chain disruptions occurred. They reduced output by 70% for a month earlier in the summer, and this could be repeated. Let's see what happens. There are many, many different instances where we've had closures and there's a huge disruption as a result. This happens in LA, this happens in different parts of China, This anywhere anywhere. And what do you think that does? That pushes the prices up. The supply and demand fundamentals are being thrown off by massive shutdowns and sort of widespread shutdowns that are going on everywhere. And this, of course, is definitely not a good thing for people because, you know, like I said in the Money GPS Insights, you can tell what's going to happen by looking at certain indicators, but things are so wacky today that you've got to be careful. But right now we have to build the case for whatever it is we want to invest in or, or you know, if we're just paying attention to the economy to see where it's going, then you know, I would say look at as many different aspects of it as possible to have a full picture. In connection with that, you can see this article, production snags cause four to delay deliveries of Bronco SUV, SUV and the Mustang Mach-E. It's affecting cars big time. I think it's strange. If you look at 2019, they had this huge, the, the, there was such an abundance of cars. We've never seen anything like it before. And then right now, today, the complete opposite has happened. Who knows? Who knows? Large social security COLA increase, cost of living adjustment increase may spark a debate about the appropriate index. So all along, we're not getting enough. And now today, oh, maybe it's too much. That's what they're trying to say. Well, you know, we'll see. Social security, cost of living adjustment, 1980 up until the projection for 1922. Uh, 2022, excuse me. And looking at this, you could see 1980, huge, right? Big time. But, you know, in more recent years, you were looking at 1%, 2%, and you know that's not the real inflation rate. 
You know that. Critics contend that the CPIW, the price index for urban wage earners and clerical workers, which is currently used to determine COLA, understates inflation for retirees because the elderly spend more money on their medical care and the cost of medical care has been rising rapidly. Indeed, in 2007, the earliest year for which comparable data is available, the elderly spend more than twice as much on medical care relative to the total expenditures than the population as a whole. They get into this. What is it all going to be? Nobody really knows, but I think it's important just to see how real inflation affects people. Real inflation. I'm talking about what people actually spend on their health care, on their house, on their electricity, on their energy prices, food prices, everything. The real rate, whatever, you know, CPIW, core PCE rate, it all doesn't matter because it doesn't really get to the root of what people are dealing with today. And that is the more money they pump into this system, the more the devaluation of the dollars is taking place and the more that hits you at home. And then we have this here. Millionaires are calling for an emergency tax on billionaires and they are trying to push this, but never in history have we seen the middle class not feel the brunt of any tax increase. It's just the way it goes. We'll see what happens, but that's the way it goes. Look, if you want to be able to get the knowledge that I'm sharing here today, I hope that you will sign up for the insiders. That's my way to get to you directly. It's very simple to sign up. It's available at this card or at the moneygps.com. It's totally free. That's how I get directly to you. So I appreciate that. And if you haven't already hit that thumbs up button, doing so supports the channel. So just click that. And if you haven't seen this video already, you definitely want to check it out. Click it and I'll see you there.